In this video, we will look at the Data Center Workload Optimization feature of vRealize Operations, which is a main component of your self-driving data center. Workload optimization works closely with DRS to ensure applications have the resources they need. Under its watch, VMs will be moved to other clusters to meet your performance, operational, and business intent. How well your environment is optimized can be quickly viewed from the Quick Start page. Here we see four data centers require optimization. You can view the details by clicking on the Workload Optimization link. The Workload Optimization screen shows you a list of data centers across the top, as well as their optimization status, current capacity remaining, and potential cost savings opportunities. Here are the data centers that need optimization for performance, operational, or business reasons are denoted as not optimized, and they move to the front of the list. Selecting one will allow you to focus your efforts on that data center. In the middle of the screen, you can view the optimization recommendation to resolve the problem for this data center. This recommendation can be run in one of three ways. It can be run manually with the Optimize Now button, or it can be automated to either run immediately when optimization is needed or scheduled to run on an ongoing basis during one of your maintenance windows. Before we optimize this data center, let's look at how you can set up your operational and business intent for your self-driving data center. First, you need to determine your target utilization objective for the data center. If you want to ensure application performance and spread workloads evenly across available resources, choose Balance. If you're looking to place workloads into as few clusters as possible and therefore lowering your cost per VM and possibly repurpose some hosts, choose Consolidate. Next, we need to configure the percentage of headroom. Headroom allows you to choose how much risk is acceptable in a cluster. It provides a percent buffer of CPU, memory, and disk space and reduces the risk from bursts and unexpected demand spikes. In this case, we've chosen 15%, which means you will be allotted 15% headroom across each of those three types of resources. Finally, we need to determine how our business needs should drive VM placement. Using vCenter tags, you can define what VM should be placed on what clusters. One of the most common use cases for this would be license enforcement. This makes sure that all of your Microsoft, Oracle, and Linux VMs remain on specific clusters for license cost purposes. Once you have defined your operational and business intent, you are ready to run a workload optimization. The first screen shows the workload utilization of the clusters in the data center and the projected usage after the optimization. The real-time predictive analytics used by the workload optimization looks two hours ahead to ensure workloads moved will not need to be moved again thereby avoiding the ping-pong effect. Next, you can view the exact moves that will be taken during the optimization action. Here you can see what VMs will be moved and which data stores or clusters they will be moved to. Once reviewed, you just need to begin the action. When the optimization finishes, you can see that this data center is now optimized. This concludes the overview of workload optimization.